Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Wednesday, the 24th day of May, year of our Lord, 2023. We'll be into June next week. And the years just fly by, don't they? Anyway, again, I do pray this finds you well. We had a meeting just a short while ago about Vacation Bible School with the Board of Education meeting. So Vacation Bible School, Bible School, Vacation Bible School is coming up in about a month and a half. And it's going to be wonderful. Uh, information will be forthcoming about how you can sign up your, your children who are eligible to go. Uh, there will be information on that as well. So only a few more volunteers, although thank you, many have volunteered to help. And it's really coming together nicely. And anyway, uh, wonderful meeting tonight. Always nice to see the, the blessing to see the people of the church sort of step up and uh, into these leadership positions and just really do what needs to be done. It's a, it's a real blessing for me to watch that, so I'm very thankful of that group of people that came together tonight. And there'll be, a, just if you did volunteer, there will be a Vacation Bible School staff meeting next week. It'll be available either in person or via Zoom. We'll talk about some of the things uh, that are required of staff members and um, uh, schedules, things like that, and answer questions that that may be forming in the staff members' minds, the, the volunteers' minds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. I'm going to read for you tonight the 20 verses that comprise the ninth psalm. And the ninth psalm has an inscription, which is this, to the choir master, according to the Muth Laben, a psalm of David. And again, those terms, like uh, uh, we've had a few over the last several nights, but in this case, Muth uh, Laban, uh, as far as we know, it's a liturgical term and use some sort of musical notation, kind of like the word sila. And this, this psalm ends with the word sila, which we don't read. It's just there. It's part of the Hebrew original. I always look over there because I have a Hebrew Bible sitting over there. And it means to lift up. And, uh, uh, but we don't know what that meant. Obviously, it was a, a direction to the people as they were singing, um, maybe something they were supposed to do with their voices. So uh, we don't know what that is. And there's also a hig Higeon. We don't know what that meant either. So there's a couple of Selahs in there. So anyway, here is the ninth song. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before your presence. For you have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations. You have made the wicked perish. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy came to an end in everlasting ruins. Their cities you rooted out. The very memory of them has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He established his throne for justice. And he judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with uprightness. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praise to the Lord who sits enthroned in Zion. Tell among the peoples his deeds. For he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See my affliction from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises that in the gates of the daughter of Zion I may rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk in the pit that they made. In the net they hid, their own foot has been caught. The Lord has, been, has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. 
The wicked shall return to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are men, and that they are but men. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Again, it's a psalm of David, and it is uh, it's a comforting psalm, a little frightening. And it, it, the psalm talks, it, it brackets sort of the meat uh, of the psalm in the middle with this, I'm going to recount the deeds of the Lord. One of the ways God's people find comfort in this world is to remember what God has done. His death on our behalf, his resurrection that break break. Rick Opson opens our death is you know, all uh, salvation, salvation, and we recount those deeds. That the, the life of the church kind of orbits around two poles: the incarnation, Christmas, and the resurrection, Easter, you know, Passion, the Good Friday, the, the whole thing, the Passion of our Lord. But of course, that has to culminate in the resurrection. Otherwise, there was just the death of a man, right? and. Uh, he has to rise from the dead if he's going to break open our death. So if he's going to be able to hold the keys of death in Hades. So we recount the deeds and we find comfort in that. But then we're reminded in this psalm, and I think about this a lot. I mean, we, 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 we are warned in Scripture not to, not to pray. To, to, we need to pray for our repentance and the repentance of those around us who hate the church. And boy, I, I won't take the time to recount just the things I'm learning about today that are going on in the news in our country. And it is sad. It does make you angry. Be careful not to sin in that anger. That's we go to God and say, you need to deal with it. Now, God does not want anybody to die apart from him. That's why we need to be careful about dispelling uh, judgment on people and calling, telling people they're you know, going to hell. Uh, things like that. That doesn't mean we don't have the duty to call out things and say, that needs to stop. That is wicked. Uh, that is destructive. Uh, wicked and destructive go hand in hand. It doesn't lead to the flourishing of the human nation. You can see how confused our, our culture is today. Almost all anywhere you go in the world, you're going to find this. You know, the grips of Satan. But God reminds us in this psalm that he's victorious. And that he is the one that is seated on the throne. We uh, just celebrated the ascension a week ago tomorrow. And Sunday we'll celebrate Pentecost. Now the Ascension is a very important feast day. And most churches either transfer it to the Sunday after we do it on, it's always on a Thursday, I've explained this before, 40 days after the resurrection. Pentecost is 50. So we celebrate a number of things. But one of the things is that when does when does a coronation begin? We were just talking about this in the Hebrews class yesterday. And because we, I, I could care less really about, um, although I do pray that our brothers and sisters in England would have a good king, that a godly king. I have no opinion on Charles. Uh, well, some opinions are, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the man's heart. And so they're just opinions. But you saw, the, or at least saw news of the coronation. I didn't take the time to watch it. I find it a little fascinating. But, uh, when does a rain actually begin? Two things happen. The rain begins, and this goes back to things like David. You know, the rain and the, the king subsequent to David and, and other practices in the ancient world, they're, they're a little different in the, in the Bible. Uh, those differences are significant. We won't pack those tonight. But the rain begins when the king sits on the throne. He is seated on his throne. And he's given a name. And uh, Jesus' reign, remember all authority, you think about it, all authority has been given to him. That, that's Matthew, he said, that's said in a number of places, but, but uh, I'm thinking when Jesus speaks after the resurrection, before he tells the church what it's going to do, all authority on earth has been given to me. That means you can't go anywhere where Jesus is not the one in authority. And then he says, therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to guard whatsoever to keep 
whatsoever all things I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age of ages. So when he ascends, he's seated on the throne, he's given a name by the Father, and that name is actually put on us in our baptism. Um, we belong to Christ. And there's lots of names for Jesus in Scripture. I mean, his name is Jesus. That's the name his parents give him according to the command of God. But he's got all these titles, let's say it like that. And uh, he's given a name, just like a king will often, when they're seated on the throne, will take a name, the name of their, of their reign. And, you know, Jesus, Alpha, Omega, um, the latter reigns, Emmanuel, uh, you know, the list goes on. So he is seated on the throne. Our humanity is seated on the throne, but that means Christ is in charge. The Lord sits enthroned forever. No one's going to take him off that throne. So no matter what our eyes see, and boy, it sure seems like the world gets the upper hand at times. It's like I, I have stopped saying that'll never happen, you know, because it just happens. But I also know that God is in charge. Now, God deals with these things according to his will, according to his time. Remember, he doesn't want anybody to die apart from him. He, would, he, he wishes that all would repent. His desire is that all would repent and cling to him. It would be a wonderful thing if they did. And, you know, our lives become like us and our, with our lives being lives of repentance. So he sits in throne forever. He's established his throne for justice. He judges the world with his righteousness. So there will be, finally, a judgment. He's a stronghold for the oppressed stronghold in times of trouble. Don't you worry. First of all, you are an heir to everlasting life, and this is not the world we're living for. We're living for the life to come. We've been brought into that world. We, the promise of that world has been bestowed upon us. We are already in that world through the blood of Jesus Christ, with our flesh seated at the right hand of God in him. So he is the stronghold for the oppressed, the stronghold in times of trouble. Remember that when you pray, when you turn on the news, like, my gosh, what is going on? The Lord is a stronghold. And those who know your name you know, put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Think about that word, Lord. You've heard me say this again. I'll just rehash it very, very briefly. It's capital L, all throughout this psalm, psalm, it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital E. That means Yahweh. The name is it's the holy name. And so the Israelites wouldn't say, we don't say it very often. I'm doing it for teaching purposes. We say, purposes, we say Lord. But Jesus, Yahshua, that's his name. Joshua, Yah, Yahweh. Yahweh is salvation. The Lord saves. He has that name. So when Paul calls him Lord, when he's called Lord, especially in the epistles, it's making the connection that he is Yahweh, that he indeed is God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. He is our stronghold, the Lord. And, and, and think about when Paul does that, it's connecting him to all this stuff right here. The Lord is the stronghold. That means Christ is the stronghold for the oppressed. For Christ, you have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing, pra sing praises to Christ who sits enthroned in Zion. Now, David, of course, is writing of the temple. We're writing of the heavenly temple. That oh, everything, you know, Jesus is, is is seated on the throne above everything, uh, and you know the the earth and the nations are his footstool, and he holds the scepter of uh, of rightness in his hand. It's it's a mar it's a marvel. So, be gracious to the Lord, see my affliction from those who hate me. He will not forget us when we're persecuted. Remember already what you are in Christ, and then again. Why do we remember? Because we keep recounting the deeds. We keep talking about the Incarnation. We keep talking about Easter. We keep talking about what the Passion. We, we resolve to know nothing among us but Christ and Him crucified. And how all He did came to us, which is our baptism, which is the Lord's Supper, which is the, the proclamation of forgiveness, absolution, that the pastor, the one put there by the stead and command of our Lord Jesus Christ to say those things to me. So, we recount those deeds and we are comforted. And we are reminded we know the whole story. And come what may in this life, we are heirs to everlasting life. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are but men. And indeed they are. Uh, and then right before that, for the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
let's now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for the marriages and the families of your people, that husbands and wives, parents and children may live according not to the world's desires or the world's definitions, but according to your word, and live in that harmony, knowing that in that we are blessed, that we cling always to your word of God, strengthen us that we may stand firm. We pray, as always, on these Wednesday nights for parents who must raise the children alone, keep them from falling into loneliness and despair, and bless us, their neighbors, with what we need to help support them and care for them and their children. May we, your people, and our families, be a blessing to our communities and, so, and show forth the light of Christ. May we, first and foremost, be a blessing to our neighborhoods, that we may stand firm with the light of Christ and his blessed word, and that our neighbors may be blessed through us. Heavenly Father, as always, we pray for those who are crying out to you, for our dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Myron, Dennis, Dave, Dawn, Ardo, Klaus, my brother in office, Dale, dear friends of the congregation, Liberty, Marlis, Joe, Phil, Dylan, Jeff, Christy, Brad, Scott, Amy, George, Jeremy, Don, Beth, Clint, Tom, Jim, Bob, Josiah, Katie, Heather, Bert, Dave, Anita, Dee, John, Jason, Camden, Ashley, Paul, Eric, Deb, Steve. Place your hand upon them, keeping them ever mindful of your will. Be with those who care for them, that they might be your instruments for their healing. And all things, keep them and us mindful of your victory, even over death itself. We pray that you bless farmers with the moisture they need, that the crops would grow, and they may be your instruments in providing food to our communities and even to our nation and the world, and that their needs and their ability to support their families may be met. Heavenly Father, as we approach a holiday weekend, we ask you to bless all who travel, allow them to reach their destinations safely, and then at the end of their time away, return home. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to flip to the, almost to the back of the hymnal and sing... Well, a few stanzas of this 4th century hymn, Holy God, we praise thy name, hymn 940. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Hark the glad 
that's a celestial hymn. Angel choirs above are raising, cherubim and seraphim, in unceasing chorus praising. Fill the heavens with sweet accord, holy, holy, holy Lord. Lo, the apostles' holy train, join thy sacred name to hallow. Prophets swell the glad refrain, and the white robe martyrs follow, and from morn to set of sun, through the church the song goes on. Thou art King of glory, Christ, Son of God, yet born of Mary, for a sin is sacrificed, as to death the tributary, first to break the bars of death, thou hast opened heaven to faith. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, three we name Thee, though in essence only one, undivided God we claim Thee, and adoring bend the knee, while we own the mystery. That's the five stanzas that we have in the hymnal here. There are actually a couple more that aren't printed in the hymnal, uh, but we, when we sing them in church, we use all of them. Uh, Holy God, we praise thy name, 940. Love that that third stanza. Uh, that uh, from morn to set of sun, through the church, the song goes on. That song that the apostles sang, the song of Christ. Uh, that uh, through the church, the song goes on and it brings melody, much needed melody, to our dark world. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed evening, pleasant rest, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.